As a restaurant owner, um, I know the staff is very crucial. And uh, do you have any recommendations on how it pertains to how to handle tips and gratuity? Um, I feel that gratuity should be on all checks that way, because it keeps the morale up of the waitresses and waiters. I'd like to know what your thoughts on that would be. Here's the problem with tips. Mm -hmm. And, and you use the word gratuity. I don't see enough restaurant operators telling their customers to stop tipping my waitresses for bad performance. What you're really doing is you're basically trained as a customer to give my wait staff a 15% tip just for showing up. And then when my business fails because the service was miserable, you say I did something wrong. Well, but you're training my wait staff by giving them a 15% tip for miserable service. Talk about setting a guy's business up to fail. And in fact, we've had clients where we've created signage in their restaurants that says, Please do not tip my waitresses for bad service. You're killing my business. <laughs> now think about that. Are you teaching your employees that? I understand that a tip helps employee morale, but it's a terrible training device if the performance is poor. Yeah. And more often than not, the performance is poor. Or, at the very least, either mediocre or ho-hum. Nothing too special. Now, see, I'm the type of guy, being as I do this for a living, I tip either nothing or I tip huge. Or I suppose I tip, eh, 20%. It is what it is. But if I'm impressed, it's not unusual for me to tip 50% or 80% or 100%. But i got to be impressed. And then if you did a really good job, eh, 20%. And if you did anything less than a really good job, it's zip. Well, you know, there's a lot of debate about tip pooling. We could get into tip pooling a little bit <clears throat> and the impact that tip pooling has. Again, back in the day, tip pooling was supposed to be where a waitress chose for herself or his self on who they were going to share their tips with. They were supposed to get the tip and then they would decide how they would share it with other people. Tip sharing. Okay, but now it's really become more tip pooling, which is mm -hmm. all the tips going to one, and then we split it up. Number one, I could debate that's illegal. Yeah. And I think the courts are going to deal with that a lot here coming up, because that is a person's income. Mm -hmm. Number two, a miserable way to run the business because you're not rewarding the superstars and you're not taking away from the slackers. You're basically making everybody equal. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that should be happening. I do think the little tip jars that you see at fast food places and coffee places that are sitting, I think that is a miserable, miserable way to run the business. I, I think that is horrible. I also think having the forced gratuity on my check. I don't care how many people I have at my table that says I automatically have to give X percentage of tip because I have more than nine people at my table or whatever the number is. I think that is a horrible way of doing business. Absolutely horrible. Now you'll get people that argue, well, but X, Y, Z, when they come in here, they don't give us a big enough tip. Or more often than not, the guys or girls don't want those bigger tables because they don't get big enough tips. Okay, well, but see, maybe the service wasn't good enough to get a big enough tip. I do know the customer doesn't like it. We have plenty of surveys that show the customer doesn't like it. I also know we have plenty of surveys that show that when the customer does get exceptional service and you have a forced gratuity on the check, they don't give any more. So now the person who did a wonderful job doesn't get rewarded. And you are training them at that point that mediocrity is perfectly fine. And I don't think you are